Hey, so I know it's been a really long time, or at least it feels like a really long time since I last filmed. So I thought it was about time for us to have a bit of a catch up. trying to think the last time I filmed and I think I think it has been a couple of months so yeah let me start by telling you what I've been up to and what I've been doing first off most people know that I own a small baking business baking business cake business um so I have been baking spending a bit of time in the kitchen also housework I mean I don't know if anyone else feels this way but I feel like housework is a is a job in itself I also had my 27th birthday. Um, my birthday was in November, which meant that I had to spend it in lockdown. Uh, luckily I live with Yas, so we were able to plan like a little lockdown birthday. So we went to this really nice park called Rushmere. Even though it was raining, I didn't really care. It was really nice. We had a good old walk, um, you know, took some photos, got some hot chocolate. It was really nice actually. Um, and then we went to Costco, because I love Costco and I wanted a red velvet cake. I got a red velvet cake, one whole cake just for me and Yas, but Yas didn't eat it. Literally took, I probably had like one slice that night and I couldn't eat it, so I had to eat. I had to eat this whole cake throughout the duration of like a good few days. I gave some to my friend um but yeah got a whole cake anyway um we went to get some Krispy Kremes because I love Krispy Kremes we came home we put the mattresses down in our spare room upstairs we have two like small mattresses that we usually bring downstairs That's proper anticlimactic. <laughs> and we'll like lay and make and have like a den movie day, and that's what we did. Um, just laid and watched films, and my choice, of course, because it was my birthday. Um, got greasy pizza. <laughs> I kind of went all out when it came to food. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I just didn't care. I just wanted it all. So yeah, we did all of that. Oh, and we went to the garden center the next day, which was really nice because it's obviously it had all its Christmas bits in. So that was fun going Christmas shopping in the garden center. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed my birthday. It doesn't seem like a birthday that someone would enjoy, but I'm a very simple girl. <laughs> I thought it was quite fun and I actually really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, that was my 27th, been and gone. Uh, then after that, we had obviously Christmas and new year but everyone knows we're in lockdown and we weren't allowed to do anything or see anyone um so yeah not really much to write home about there uh what else has happened in the last couple months oh i got a job like a second job i'm still doing my baking i still have my business but i wanted to get a part-time job i'll go into into more detail later on but um yeah I got a second job as a support worker and I'm really excited <laughs> I haven't started yet um going for paperwork and stuff um but yeah I'm really excited I've also been on a little bit of a weight loss journey I basically I don't know for a good few months now I've been on a bit of a Debbie Downer um and I've just been binge eating allowing myself to just be lazy and you know not really working out and I don't know just eating rubbish uh I was feeling really down about trying to conceive and not conceiving uh so yeah I was I I I, I what is wrong with me um so yeah, I put on a lot of weight and I was at the heaviest I've ever been. So not heaviest because I don't actually have scales, but I was the biggest 
uh, noticeably the biggest like when I took photos of myself or even looked at myself in the mirror I was like Jesus you really let yourself go like let yourself go and I was feeling really unhealthy and I just thought you know what I need to like I need to sort myself out basically <laughs> so that's what I did I um changed my diet I've started eating healthy like uh, low carb not not like um keto or anything but just lowering my carb count because of the PCOS um and yeah it's all been healthy food N not takeouts I've had one or two but no takeouts um no rubbish no snacking um just healthy meals and it's actually been it's it's been all right um and I've been exercising daily. I did a two week shred, which was really, really, really hard. Really hard. Um, it was, which one was it? Oh, Chloe Ting. It was her Chloe Ting two week shred, I think 2019 one. And I finished it and I do have before and after pictures, but I don't know if I'm gonna be posting them. I do have documentation, but I'm still in the process of my um, weight loss journey. Again, I don't know how much weight I've lost, but I can visibly see that I've lost inches. Actually, I, I measured myself and I've lost inches. Um, I think I lost two inches around my waist. Was it two or three? Something like that. I lost an inch on my arms, an inch and a half on my thighs. Um, I gained on my bum. <laughs> I just yeah I I, uh, I was really yeah I was feeling really good. I sent all of my friends the before and after pictures because I was so proud of myself. But um, yeah, so I've been doing that. But I'm still in the process of that. So I might be showing uh, results before and after results. Um, I might not. I'm not sure yet if I want to post that. But we'll see. Um, I'll post a link below to the shred if anyone's even interested. Um, it's really good as long as long as you keep to it it's really 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 good so that's basically what I've been up to in the last couple of months um, now the main reason I guess for this video is because as you all know I've been trying for a really long time now um, I think we're coming up to I think it's about three and a half years I think in like July or August maybe it's four years um, that we've been trying for and so that means that we have experienced trying to conceive in a normal life and during a pandemic. And what I can tell you is that I've just, I've noticed a massive difference. Um, and that's quite obvious that there would be trying to conceive during a pandemic. So yeah, I thought I would just go into that a little bit because I really didn't think I, I guess it was naive or stupid of me to to think that my life would feel the same um, trying to conceive wise but it doesn't <laughs> it's a lot harder um, if I thought trying to conceive in a normal life was difficult this is 10 times worse first off um, appointments you uh, doctor's appointments or hospital appointments you can't get them they don't want people in the hospital. Obviously, this is all um, understandable and rightly so. <laughs> They're trying to keep people out of doctors, uh, like out of the GP and the hospital and stuff. Um, so it's really impossible to get any sort of appointment at the moment. You can get a phone appointment, but why that doesn't work for Yas and I is because he's the sponge. He takes in the information and I'm just there, basically. Um, and then he explains everything to me after and says, and then I go, oh, okay, that's what that meant. Um, but unfortunately, when Yas is now at work and I'm having to be the sponge, <laughs> it's not working because Yas will come home and I'll be like, yeah, we spoke about this. And then he'll be like, what about that? And then I remember that I forgot to ask certain questions and it just, it doesn't work for us. Um, so yeah, so then we have to have a second appointment where Yas has to be on the phone um, you know, where they call Yas and I'm not present for that because it's, it's best that he gets the information as well. Um, whereas usually we would obviously both just get an appointment to go into the office and Yas would take, you know, the afternoon off to come or the morning off to come to the appointment and then go to work or whatever. But you can't take, this is when he's gone back to work, by the way, not when he's working at home. 
but you can't take like a morning off for a phone call, especially because they don't even tell you when you're getting a phone call. They just say sometime in the afternoon or, you know, hopefully in the morning. It's been that rushed and stressed at the hospital that they really can't even tell you when they're gonna call you. They can give you like a time frame, but obviously Yas can't take off time for a time frame. So yeah, doctor's appointments, hospital appointments. Um, also just emails um, with me and you know who I deal with at the hospital. We don't do phone calls, it's all done through email. And just getting a reply takes ages um weeks even just to get a reply from an email and i think i can't tell you if this is for sure but i think it's just because there's so much demand for you know doctors and nurses that they're all kind of being spread really thin um so yeah it, it's, it's really slowed the process down. Even though it was slow in the first place, it's even slower now, which is really hard to deal with. Also, things like reflexology and acupuncture. Now, they are not obviously doctor's offices and stuff, but they're things that I wanted, like, okay, IVF is my last choice, okay? Um, I wanted to try everything that I could that would help or that I've heard has helped before I get to that option. Now, reflexology and acupuncture was two of those things. Um, I can no longer do those because they're closed because of COVID and the pandemic and lockdown. And I can't even tell you when they'll reopen. So that's a bit of a bummer. So yeah, just all in all, just appointments in life. Um, you just, you can't get them. It's very, very, very hard. The second thing um, that's different is overthinking. Now in life, <laughs> normal life, I am an overthinker. I am a worrier. Um, we all know that I deal with anxiety, um, but yeah, I overthink a lot of things. And during a pandemic, somehow it's got worse. And I think that might be down to the fact that we, the UK at least has been in lockdown for it feels like the whole year but we've been in and out of lockdown i mean i think we're as i speak i think we're in the fourth lockdown and we don't know when it's even going to be lifted which means that because we're going through covid and we're in lockdown all the time the pandemic and all of that obviously i'm getting less business as a baker because people are losing their jobs or you know they're being paid less or they don't want to spend what little money they have on baked goods um, or they just don't want to order food from you know someone because of covid like they don't want to be around people they don't want to be near people um because they don't want any tr um covid to be like transmitted um which is all again understandable so understandably business has taken a bit of a hit um which means I'm spending less time baking in the kitchen and more time on my phone, on social media, which is bad because on social media, obviously I talk about my fertility problems. On YouTube, I talk about my fertility problems, which means the alg algorithms show me everything about infertility. But instead of it all being infertility, it's like, oh, here, you know, this person's pregnant, this person's pregnant, this person's pregnant everyone's pregnant, you know, pictures of pregnant women and, uh, you know, IVF things and pregnancy tests and ovulation kits, even ads on YouTube show me pregnancy tests. Um, even, you know, if I'm not on social media, if I'm sitting there watching TV or something, it's just life that there's going to be kids or, you know, miscarriages or uh, pregnancy tests and things like that in, in series and films. Can't really get away with it away with it away from it which is really difficult because sometimes you when you're going when you're trying to conceive you really do just need a break you need to just not hear about anything to do with trying to conceive or you know fertility issues or pregnancies you just you just don't want to hear it you don't want to think about it you it's normal to go through those days but when you're kind of stuck at home not really doing much it's really easy to just kind of fill your head with thinking about 
pregnancy and fertility issues and things like that. So yeah, you can't get away from it. The other thing is the hit that is had on, uh, I guess, mental health. I've been okay. It just, it really does hit you being stuck in lockdown and I guess being completely locked away from civilization. Um, you don't see your friends and you don't see your family and you're not allowed to be around people and it's really it's really difficult to kind of feel human. I don't know if that makes sense. It's really difficult to feel human because I mean the only person that I really talk to is yeah like face, face to face he's the only person that I've spoken to and I don't know how long that's been that he's been the only person that I've spoken to face to face um so obviously that's going to take a bit of a hit um and so that is the reason why I decided to go for a second job um I just thought it was about time I didn't want my anxiety to get worse. I, I am actually a people person. My anxiety actually makes me not a people person, but I am at heart. And it was getting to the point where I was seeing less and less people and I was doing less and less every day. That even just the thought of talking to like a stranger, say like we go to the supermarket, talking to a stranger would make me be like, oh God. Or having to phone someone would make me feel weird. And I just thought, no, this can't do. I need to get out there. So yeah. That's the main reason why I went for a second job. Um, and I, I could not be happier with my decision to do that. The third thing is stress. Now for me, I started off this pandemic feeling fine, but as it's grown, I am becoming more and more stressed. Um, and I can't really tell you why. I am slightly scared of getting COVID obviously no one wants to get it I don't want to get sick I don't want anyone I know to get sick um again the stress of just not seeing anyone or being around anyone or being allowed to do anything um there's yeah there is quite a bit of stress the stress of not getting much business um yeah I guess the whole thing is stressful the stress of not hearing from doctors and you know having to wait for ages for an email back it's, it's all stressful and obviously we all know that when you're trying to conceive stress is the worst thing like you're supposed to be avoiding stress at all costs and this has just brought sorry it's my rabbit and this has just brought so much And this has just brought so much stress into our lives, um, which is really, really unfortunate. But also as well, people say, you know, well, a lot of people say that when you stop thinking about trying so hard, it happens. Um, I know some people get annoyed when people say that to them, but I think it's, but I think it's, um, I think it's true. I think when you do, um release yourself from stress that you know your body hears that and things happen and so I really really desperately need I think both Yas and I really really desperately both need like a beach holiday we just need to get away and just not think about trying to conceive just maybe take a bit of a break um and just relax a little bit you know just go away in nice weather beach you know sun um and just relax and obviously because of covid and the pandemic and lockdown we are not allowed to go on holiday uh so yeah that equals more stress <laughs> um so yeah yeah it, it's been difficult i'm not gonna lie now Moving on, um, we did look into um, IUI. I don't know if I mentioned it, but our doctor said that we do have the option of doing IUI over IVF, but they don't do IUI on the NHS. So we looked into it. Um, 
our doctor told us, I've got my notes here from what she said, because they can only tell you based on your background, what your chances are and stuff. So I know mine. So she basically said the difference between IUI and IVF is um, with IUI, me personally, I would have to go back on Clomid and I would have, yeah, I would have it done through Clomid. Some people don't have to go on medicine at all, um, but I would have to go on Clomid. Um, and then basically the sperm would be put straight into my womb. Whereas IVF, they take eggs and the sperm, put them together and then insert them back. I'm so sorry, my rabbits are just the clumsiest rabbits in the world. She told me it was a more gentle way of dealing with infertility, um, which is what I was looking for. IVF scares me in many ways. Um, but she did tell me the success rates of both of them. Neither of them are that high which is slightly worrying. Um, but she said, IUI, there would be an 18 to 20% chance that it would work for us. Um, and then IVF, she said, would be a 35 to 40% chance. I guess that's not bad, actually. 35 to 40% chance that it would work for us. That's double. IVF has double the success rate than IUI. And that, for me, was huge. Um, and she said it's because IUI, it's one egg, and with IVF, it's multiple. Um, and obviously, with, with IVF, you have to do the injections and stuff, which is really, really scary for me. Um, now, as I mentioned, only phone call appointments, so I actually forgot to ask how much IUI is. Um, so Yas had to go ahead and get the second phone appointment and he asked all of his questions um, and it's thousands in, in, uh, in total um, it's thousands and we just we just don't think it makes sense to pay thousands of pounds for something that's going to give us half the success rate so our decision has been made we're going to be starting the ivf Yay! yeah i'm i'm quite excited about it now i know i shouldn't be excited about starting starting ivf but i've spent quite a bit of my time trying to avoid it but now because it, we've just kind of been floating about i feel like i feel like yas and i've been floating about in space and so we're really excited to finally be going somewhere doing something so yeah we're really excited to be going somewhere it is scary but i'll get through it you know many women do i'm strong i can do this um but yeah that's our decision ivf um and i'm going to be documenting the whole thing the good the bad and the ugly i might regret saying that but yeah we do have a few emails but i'll go into that in the next video um, on what they need from us to start the process um, so yeah I'll be talking about that in our next video so stay tuned if you care to know about IVF and what it entails please like if you like this video um, comment if you have any questions or you just want to talk about anything or give me any advice you know starting IVF also subscribe to my channel if you want to keep going with me on my infertility journey